tutorial 7 in our Action Script 3 for Games series. And hopefully going to be another fun one. This is all about hit, hit testing. Now I want to say, which once again, I'll make this a quick plug. Please check out BigToyInteractive.com. We're going to be building that site. And uh, just uh, the plan of this is to give back what I know and hopefully people will just check out our games. We don't expect anyone to buy anything or anything like that. Just uh, check it out. You know, give us give us a fair chance. BigToyInteractive.com. We're going to have a bunch of games coming out. So here we go. Hit testing. A crucial... I don't know how it gets more crucial than this in making games. Hit, hit testing is everything. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're taking our same tutorial and from our from our last tutorial, and we have the same setup here. Uh, I haven't changed anything yet. So I made a mistake in the last tutorial of writing some of the code, uh, most of the code in advance, and uh, I shouldn't do that. So anyway, I want to make a new layer. We're doing everything from scratch, right? So here we go. We're going to call this layer square. So we're going to be making a square, like a green square. I like green. Uh, that's, that's a little bit too big. Let's shrink that down a little bit. Put that here. The align tool is nice. Helps you get stuff right in the middle. So we're going to highlight it, the square we made, and we're going to convert it to a symbol. I'm going to call it square. And keep in mind, notice the difference. It's going to be a square with a capital S. I'm going to click export for action script. It automatically takes the name. Uh, that I put in. It's naming it a square. This is act this is the class that this object, this movie clip is going to be known as in the program. Again, this is important to understand. Its base class, since it's a movie clip, is movie clip. And here you could have sprite. Um, there's a whole bunch of different flash has like I mentioned a long time ago, Flash has hundreds of built-in classes that make up the ActionScript language. And we use them in everything we do. So Movie Clip is, is one of the highest up in the chain. Uh, it, and these are all topics that I'm going to sprinkle in here and there because it really does help you if you understand all this. A Movie Clip inherits its properties from because it's a display object there are a lot of properties that it gets and uh, from that and it goes all the way down the chain to just a basic object so for example the having an X and Y property is a property is something a display object would have um, so what am I getting here oh looks like I've got a square in the library here. Sorry about that. So um, let's just pull that one out since you know how that's done. Center that and here we go. So this square I'm going to give an instance name of square with a lowercase s. Now notice the difference here that the uppercase is the movie clip itself, it's the class, it's its what the class is known by. Um, just like a movie clip is a, is a class, my square is its own class, but it's based on the movie clip class. Okay, so lower lowercase square, here we go. We got that on its own layer, it's now a symbol we can refer to. And we're not touching any of the other keyframes in this tutorial. So I want you to understand that just the first one. 
So once again, just to play for anyone that hasn't seen the last tutorial, we've got this square now on our field, but all the last tutorial did is animated this character through code, making him go from left to right with our first func our function here, and it's it's updating his x position by ten every time it's called. So it's moving from left to right. And we're calling it every five frames. We are calling that same fly right function. And in the last frame, we have an if statement that tells it when it gets to the end of the screen here, go back to the beginning. So it's a loop. So anyway, let's get to the new code. So we're going to write our second function. So here we go, function. And we're going to call it pull backwards. Again, I'll go into more detail about why we write void later on. So we're, we're going to do, in this function, we're going to do the opposite movement as our fly right function does. We're going to, we're going to tell it to we're going to update its x position in the other direction, minus 10. Instead of adding 10, we're going to subtract 10 every time this pull backwards function is called. Just like every time the fly right function is called, we add 10, meaning go 10 to the right. When the pull backwards is called, it's going to pull it backwards. It's going to move it 10 to the left, minus 10 from its x position. So when is this function going to get called? How is it going to fit together? You might be asking. Please be asking that. So here we go. We're going to nest an if statement, which you've already seen, inside of our fly right function. So what we're going to and this this gets to the concept of hit testing which I, I'm, I'm seven minutes in here, and I'm just getting to it. Sorry about that. So we have our same flyer, which is the name of this, this symbol here. I'm not going to show you that again and waste more time. But uh, we're going to write this new, this is a built-in function of Flash. You may have used it before you were even getting into programming, just fooling around, because it's a common one. So we're going to say, if the flyer, this guy, hit test object, if it touches the square, there's our new statement. Once again, we've got flyer and we've got square. This is called square, as it's a square. Riveting, I know. So here we go. If the flyer touches the square. Now it's checking the bounding box. Flash does things by, hit test object works by checking if the bounding box is touched. Now the bounding box here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a blue outline. It's right, it's right, uh, because the object's a square, you can't see it as well. But here in this character, if you notice, the bounding box is not, there's a little bit of gap. And you're gonna see that when we do our hit test it's actually going to come really close to hitting the square. But for all intents and purposes, I'm trying to teach you the concept um, that when the bounding box touches, it counts as a hit. So if the flyer hits the square, we are going to call our pull backwards function. Notice the lowercase p and the up, uppercase b, which as I mentioned is a good practice. Make the first letter, the first and the first word of your function should start with a lowercase letter, and all words after that, just like here, start with an uppercase. So pull backwards. We're going to call that if, the, if it touches. And if it does not, which is the else statement, which we've all, you've also seen, not forget to add, common mistake is to forgetting to add one of these brackets that, that close out, open and close your statements. If you don't have a matching brackets, which watch this, 
you get an error. I got a syntax error. I don't know if you can see this up here, but a syntax error is just what it sounds like. Expecting right brace before the end of the program. So it was it was expecting that right brace. It just just get in the habit of if you have an open one, put a closing one. And if your if your program you're using doesn't automatically put one for you, before you even fill this statement with anything in the middle, write your open, put your opening bracket and put your closing bracket because it's an easy thing to mess up, especially when you have a lot of code. So if the flyer touches the square, we're going to pull backwards, which is calling this function, which pulls it to the left. Else, if, which means if the flyer is not touching the square, because it either is or it isn't, so first it's going to check if it is and pull backwards. If it's not, we're going to do the same thing that we were doing in our last tutorial and what I just showed you, which is just move to the right. So let's test this out. It's going, it's going, it's going. And look at that. It stopped at the square. And as you can see, it's going back and forth a little bit because the it's getting the function is continually getting called and telling it to move. And once it moves backwards, it's no longer touching the square. So it moves forward once, it's touching the square, etc. It's a loop. So so there you go. That that is you've just done hit testing. Now, later on, we're going to be doing this while we're the one controlling the character. Instead of having the character automatically move, you know, make it more like a real game where we are controlling the character and we're, we're moving it up against the square. So actually, that's a good tutorial to, to get to soon uh, once I go over how to do keyboard control and mouse control, which that's a whole lot of other information in of itself. So... Anyway, that's a basic hit test, and uh, I think that's a good place to stop. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and spread the word. Thank you.